And this is Sam from Raps on TV, the co-host of the one and only Raps on TV boxing show. I'm pleased to have the Ghanaian warrior, the British Southwest London champion of the middleweight division. We got one other than Mr. Denzel Bentley. What's happening, my guy? What's happening? I'm good, man. How are you? I wish I could have all that laugh, that sound effect noise and all the ooh and all the, all the shaking, but obviously <laughs> we're learning to get across for this whole technology thing right now. So you got to, yeah. Uh, how you feeling, champ? What's it like? Good man. I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Just been in the gym, training, you know, getting ready for what's next. Yeah, what what is next, bro? What is next? I got no clue right now. Perth bids are tomorrow. So hopefully, you know, we see we see who wins it and we see what's going on. So Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it's either cash or I don't know, but we have to see when the first wins, isn't it? So. No, I I, I hear that, bro. I say say no. What do you what do you think of what do you make of Felix Cash? He's made a lot of noise. Um, well, he's a hyped up guy. I think he was an Olympian, had an Olympic pedigree. Um, got a lot of people behind him and a bit of support. Is this is this kind of is this kind of style of fight and something you can handle? Yeah, no, 100%, man, it's a fight. You know, he's in my division. We're going to cross paths eventually. It just happens to be now for two belts, if it happens. I think it'll be a good fight, and I think it's a fight that I can win, so... Yeah. I'm ready, man. Um, do you think your profile will then kind of really be platformed from there? Do you really think you'll start to get that respect? Yeah, 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 100%. Because, you know, when he came through, there wasn't really any middleweight, middleweights in the country, like other prospects, or maybe there were, but they all kind of fell off along the way, and he kind of... You know, was building up. Um, you, you know, obviously, probably he was the only uh, bit of weight that stood out on that match him side of thing. So you know, he was pumped up a little bit, and he was ranked. He's been ranked quite high from for for a while. So you know, uh, he obviously he's obviously a lot more known than than obviously um, I am in terms of you know the boxing world. Him being on a GB squad as an amateur and all these things, but. A win against him would push me on a bit further to, towards European and world level. So, mm, looking mm, forward and, that, to it. and that's the plan. What world, world level is the plan? Um, do you think that yeah, would, 100%. Think it's possible that it could happen this year, or are you looking more 2022 goals for world level? Not looking past your yeah. No, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. 2022 um, sounds sounds you know realistic to me. If it happens earlier, then obviously we're grateful. But 2022 sounds realistic to me. Obviously, you want to go through the steps, you know. Uh, win the Commonwealth, win the European, and then obviously that's the only thing that's next. So when we get in that position, then obviously it, it, it will look more realistic. Yeah, no, I hear that, bro. Okay, that's all good. In terms of your British title, what was it like? Kind of, I know you spent a lot of time out in Ghana over Christmas and the early December, November period. I think after your fight, you went to Ghana um, and, and showcased it with your tribe and your people and whatnot. Talk me through that, bro. Talk me through how 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 was it in Ghana? No, it was sick, man. Ghana was Ghana was beautiful. I, Got a very good reception. Obviously, my first time actually going back as a professional boxer. Obviously, I've been as I've been boxing, but I've never gone back and presented myself as a professional boxer. So, my first time like presenting myself there as a professional boxer, let alone a champion. So, the reception was beautiful. I loved it. I got I got a good reception. Loads of interviews. Met some great people, and it was it was a good experience, man. Like, I wish I could have like you know like had like a cameraman around me just like recording it but it's what it is man yeah no, that's what I say Kojo's lucky man Kojo should have been filming you this whole time since he's been since he was out there but uh... I know man but <laughs> it's what it is man no I hear that bro um, did you see any kind of boxers out there did you see the talent what, what's the what's the Ghanaian boxing scene like yeah 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 I, I saw um two upcoming boxers uh, one one called Mohammed Mohammed um I can't remember his surname, but he's, he's he's one of the lighter guys. He's very good. He just had his debut while I was out there. And another guy called David, he's still an amateur. So those are the ones I met and, you know, connected with, you know, they're coming through the ranks and they're really good fighters. And obviously, apart from that, I got to meet Azuma Nuzun, who's a legend. And, you know, he dropped me some game, gave me some advice and stuff and gave me his blessings and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, it was a good experience. Obviously, yeah, apart from that, I met Isaac Dogbo and, and Buwatsi out there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I hear that. Buwatsi's a big uh, shout out to him, actually. A big fan of the platform. Comes on a few times. He's um, mm. very vocal. He's very vocal about his Ghanaian heritage. Um, do you see the rise for a lot more Ghanaian stars coming through? The rank Yeah, 100%, man. 100%. percent we got to get it right, though. I think um, it's becoming a lot more popular out there, um, out there now. 
you know, especially where there's a lot more, you know, fighters that are fighting on their behalf, like, you know, whether we're born here or born there and coming out, going abroad to fight, you know, you know, kind of raising the flag high. It's just a matter of some of these Ghanaians going back home to fight and building boxing back in Ghana. So that's yeah. something that could eventually happen down the line when, you know, there's more money involved and stuff. But eventually, I think some of these talents will, 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 will get the exposure they deserve. Yeah, no, I, I hear that, bro. It's all about growth, progression and whatnot. Do you see yourself fighting back in uh, fighting back in Ghana? That's the goal, man. I'd love to do that. I want to do that one day, especially like seeing the reception I got when I went out there. I feel like yeah. I threw my name there for for maybe like a, a few more years and then you have like a buster fight out there. Like it's, a, it's a huge fight, sell out an arena or something. Or not even an arena, sell out a, a stadium if possible. Yeah. yeah, definitely, man. I think I think there's I think the way Africa's going with a lot of kind of we've got a lot of Ghanaian fighters coming through, like you've mentioned, and also Nigeria. Just loads of African fighters mm-hmm. coming through the rankings now, and I feel there should be a time that comes where there should be a big African card with big guys like yourself coming in. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Look at look at forward, 100%. but uh, what I want to talk to you about is last year. Uh, we didn't really get to chop up with you that much because you were too you, you, you were too busy being pulled left, right, and centre after you. Yeah, my, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Yeah. What's uh, talk me through the draw that you had and the adjustment you made to get the win with the rematch? Yeah, the draw the draw was frustrating at the beginning. It was it was very frustrating. It was like, oh, I really believed I won for me, but then like. As time went on, it was slightly a blessing in the skies because it led to being able to fight for the British title against the same opponent that I felt like I'd beat anyway. So mm-hmm. I just knew I had to tweak a few things. I, had to, I, I watched the fight over and over and over again. I, I kind of studied it. I drilled in um, the mistakes I was making. And I thought, OK, we're going to correct this in training. We're consciously correct this training. So every little thing I felt like I'd done wrong in training and sparring, I was making sure I weren't making those, some, those same mistakes again working on other things and I just felt like okay maybe this time I'm going to push for the stoppage a bit more because I felt like I held his best shot and he couldn't take me out of it mm. he couldn't even put me over with it I was still standing but he hadn't felt mine so I thought I'm going to pull it on him a bit and see how he reacts and, yeah do you yeah. think the benefit of you kind of not being on the ropes because I feel the first fight you were on the ropes quite a bit um, but you were kind of in the, in, in the fight that you won you were kind of more on the front foot and, and taking the centre of the rim or do you think that adjustment was quite key to you stopping Heffron? Yeah 100% that, 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 that adjustment was, was very key I felt like when I was going on the back foot too much I was giving him a bit too much confidence to just keep so, you know, keep playing forward and maybe to everyone else that hadn't seen me box like that before they felt like I was fighting scared where like, I felt like I was, I was boxing obviously I made a few mistakes staying in the corner too long getting caught, caught but apart from that I felt like I boxed well, I made a miss, you know, counter counted them back. But the counters I was hitting with him, I was, I was hitting him with, you know, weren't solid shots because I was moving. So I just thought second fight, plant my feet a bit more, make him feel these shots and and see how he reacts. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I t- totally agree, bro. And 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 I think that's a big lesson to a lot of boxers is that not every fight is perfect. Every fight is yeah. times that you make mistakes, and it's just about the adjustments that you make um to better yourself and get to the other. And, you, you, you were able and fortunate to get, get the knockout and moving on from there. But um, in terms of the whole boxing scene, though, what's, what's your take on the whole boxing right now? Do you feel like the scene's a bit crazy right now because of a lot of fights that have been re- rejigged and changed? What, what do you think of the whole boxing scene? I think it was a bit mad how like, the whole of January just got cancelled and stuff. But like, mm. I think there's some good fights there still for this month to come up. You know, some of them rescheduled. I'm looking forward to a few of them. Uh, I can't wait to watch boxing again. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I do. I, I love to watch boxing and you know, chop mm. up with people that know boxing and stuff. But for like the scenes, the scenes, so it's it's a bit mad right now. There's there's like a new crop of fighters coming through. There's the attention on new fighters. I feel like some of the fighters that have been there for a while are kind of fading, and you know, it's it's time for the, the next crop to kind of shine. So that's what we've got to do, and just just you know, everyone's got to take the opportunity when it comes. Yeah. Who's your who's your who's your go-to fighters? Who's your favourite fighters right now? Active, active fighters or active, active. Okay, let's go active first and then go old. Uh, how many am I allowed to pick? As many as you want. Like a, like a <laughs> top five. How many as I want? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd watch I'd like Crawford, mm. um, Spence, mm. Canelo. Not an order, by the way, but yeah, 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 yeah Crawford, yeah. Spence, Canelo. Uh, Javante Davis, 
Mm. And she called Stevenson. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned uh, you mentioned you mentioned uh, Crawford earlier and Spence after. Is that is that yeah. you're going into your terms? You, you think Crawford's going to beat Spence, or how do you see that fight going between the two? Yeah, no, I, I'm listen. I'm I'm more Crawford guy, so I think Crawford beat Spence, but I wouldn't be surprised if Spence was to come out on top. Do you know what I mean? Like they're both great fighters, they're both sick fighters. That like, I'm a fan of both of them. Like if they fight, it will be a crazy fight. Like the winner wins, and the you know losers not you know like a loser because. They're both the best in the division. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's not mm. like the loser's not washed or done after that. It's like, ah, right, cool, we'll fight someone else and bounce back. It's, it'll just be a crazy fight, man. It'll be a crazy fight, but I, I think Crawford edges it still. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear that, bro. I hear that. Oh, what, what, what do you think of uh, what do you think of Tanks? But what do you think of Tank recently? He's you know he's he's, he's put up the gas against uh, the Cruz, um, the knockout. He's a beast, bro. He's a beast. He's, he's a getting beast. Brian Garcia calling guy. him out this year. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a dangerous fact for Garcia, but I love Garcia's confidence, though. Like, it makes mm. me believe, hold on, he might know something that we don't know because he's very, very confident about Tank, you know what I'm going to say? But I think Tank's a beast right now, and I think, I don't know if Garcia could take those shots from Tank, like, especially coming from the mm. South. You saw what happened when the South pulled back and hit him against mm. the, with Luke Campbell. One of Tank's ones are different, though. Like, it's, it's, that, that's a good fight, though, though but I think, mm. I think Tank knocks him out. Mm, that's 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 a big that's a big pay per view fight, and I think that's a fight that hundred percent. I think that's a fight that put both kind of fighters on that kind of big scene. Not that they're really put on, not that they're really not on the big scene, but that really gives them a big high profile boost. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. From that fight, but um, I want to bring you onto the heavyweight scene now. Your your, your fellow Southwest Londoner Dylan White hits the hits the stage next month to avenge his loss against. Vetkin, how do you see that going? Yeah, you know what? That, that's 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 a tough fight, man. It's a because you know because of the first result, there could be a little bit of doubt in Dylan White's mind, or you know, like he seems like a tough guy to me, like a mentally strong guy. So maybe not, but you know, just generally speaking, that like, could be a little bit of doubt pardon me, in his mind, thinking like, oh damn, if I get caught with that shot, I can get knocked out again. So he might not want to fully commit to certain shots or. He might want to box too careful, which you know could end up costing him the fight. And if he goes in there too overconfident, then Povetkin can catch him with another one of those shots, and it could be you know the same results again. But listen, I hope he goes in there and wins it. Coming coming from where he's come from, he's come from you know a background similar to a lot of us. You know what I mean? Like from nothing, started on small horse shows, got his big chance against AJ, came up short, and rebuilt himself since then. So credit to him in a way he's been rebuilt rebuilt himself. But it, it is a dangerous fight. Povetkin's a dangerous fight. He's only lost to Klitschko and AJ, you know, two of the best in the sport. And I feel like, you know, didn't want to take him lightly or think his 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 old age, you know, is against him maybe because, like people say, the last thing to go is your power. And if he gets caught with another one of those shots, it could be the same result. Mm, mm, no, I agree. I think it's a make or break time for Dylan. Um, I think it's a big fight. Um, a lot at stake and it kind of, he needs his win to kind of put that loss to bed and kind of, push on with what he wants to achieve, which mm-hmm. is to become a uh, world champion. But now we're on the heavyweight division. What do you, what do you make of Wilder's comments with Mark, with his coach Mark and all what's gone on? To be honest, I've heard both of their comments and I think they're both being paid. Yeah, I just feel like it's like tip for tat. Oh, I say something about you, I'm going to say something about you back. Do you know what I mean? But mm. I think Wilder's wrong initially for, for you know, opening that kind of conversation up. You know, you know, speaking like that against speaking that like, speaking like about someone that's been in his corner for however long he's been in his corner, like throughout his career, yeah. you know, coached him and all these things. I feel like he's wrong for that. I feel like, you know, you can't say that oh, someone set you up or spite your water or he was planning with the other side. How does that benefit him? It doesn't benefit him. He gets paid every time Wilder does well. Every time the more the better Wilder does, the more it benefits Mark Brilliant, because you know. He gets paid mm. recognition for being in his corner, a good trainer. Do you know what I'm gonna say? So yeah. him going against Wilder doesn't make any sense. But you know, he made a comment he made for a reason. I don't know what that reason is, but I just feel like it's wrong. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with your line of thought there. So it's you know, we're talking about a black coach. We don't get many black coaches these days. We don't get many coaches, mm. people of color that are really in the kind of 
spoken about in the right light. And um, the, those comments were kind of hurtful to someone who's got such experience beyond Wild. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, well, like you said, Wild's obviously got his reasons and things are being said. That we only see one part of it. And I'm sure you understand the game and industry on one part. Um, but, you know, since, since we're still on the heavyweight scene, I've got to ask you, man, are you a Fury man? Are you an AJ man? If this fight happens this year, who wins? Who's got it? It's crazy. I'm I'm both, to be honest, but I was an AJ man before a Fury man, so I'm like, mm. I'm more team AJ when it comes to that fight, but I've, listen, they're both top, top fighters, top heavyweights, you know, Fury's, you know, you could say, based on the eye test, mm. the best in the division, mm. and based on uh, achievements and who's got more belts and uh, maybe the not the best wins but the better resume. AJ is mm. the best in the division. You know what I'm gonna say? So yeah, it's 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 either or. So it's just a matter of them getting inside there and 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 you know showing their skills. And everyone feels that like it's gonna be a batter, a one side batter, and that like Fury's gonna batter him. But I, I feel like AJ has got power and he's got better technique than Wilder. So it could be end up being maybe a a trickier fight than a Wilder fight or like a closer fight than a Wilder fight, but. Listen, the best man will come out on top. It's, 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 it's a, it's a two-fight deal or whatever it is. And I feel like both fights would be exciting. But I think if AJ is going to win, he probably has a better chance of winning the first fight. Because once Fury gets in the ring and gets to download that data and, you know, gets to read you and know how you are, it's, it's just, it's, it's different from the minute. Like, the second fight be, like, more likely be a, a, a Fury win. Mm, mm. No, nah, bro, I hear you. A lot of mixed opinions on this, sir. We're looking forward to it. Um, I, I think the whole thing in the heavyweight scene is really, really exciting right now. Um, I hope the fight happens um, wherever. I don't really mm. know where it is, just want it to happen. I don't think it's happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't think it's happening in the UK or for a long stretch because they'd want it to be with fans more than first. Yeah, I don't think, even if there was fans, I don't think it would happen in the UK anyway. Yeah, man. But even still, we've had some good heavyweight dust-ups last year. I mean, look at, you know, Daniel, Daniel Dubois, your fellow kind of stable mate in the Frank Warren mm -hmm. versus Joe Dress. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the fight um, of, of Daniel? And can Daniel come back? I, 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 listen, I think it was a good fight. I, I was entertained. Um, you know, it's, it's just a shame that it ended up ending the way it did, but Joe Dress done his thing and, listen, you got the win in it, so... Congrats to George Royce, but Daniel can definitely come back. He's 23, he's 23 years old. You know, even if he takes a year off, he come back, he's 24. Like, he's not even hit his prime yet. No one there is prime. Like, heavyweights don't really get into the groove until, like, after 25, 26, and 7, 28. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. you know, all the top heavyweights in the world now, you look at them, they're all in their 30s. So there's mm. no rush for Daniel to try and, you know, to, to rush there. Like, if he's not there already, um, he's got to take time, make sure the high heels, heels up, make sure the eye heels up, and... It's just, it's just get back to work and start training and, you know, just getting his mind back to, to boxing if it hasn't been on that, which I doubt it probably has been on boxing since since the fight. But he can come back, man. It's not a big deal. Whether it takes a year, two years, three years, he's still going to be young and he'll come back. No, I agree, especially now that he's got a new team. He's got a very experienced, mature coach in Mark Tibbs now. So um, Dylan White's former trainer. So, you know, I think he's got some good years ahead of him. Um, and it'll just be interesting to see what he's like when he comes back and how he fights and how he adapts his game. But um, one thing, I, the reason why I brought up Daniel Dubois is you were very vocal um, in coming to his defense with a lot of the slack that he got in regards to yeah. him, people saying he quit. Um, I mean, you were very vocal on Twitter when Matthew Macklin called him out and basically said that he quit. Um, and, and you basically gave an example of how Mark Heffron quit and no I'm said he doing something. I'm coming. Uh, yeah, go on. No, no yeah. worries, bro. Just, about, just basically talking about the tweet of you saying that Matthew Matley should keep the same energy. Give me two seconds. Set it, bro. Give me two seconds. Oh, there it is. Go on. Fine. Sit down. Be quiet though, I'm doing an interview, yeah? <clears throat> Get the charger off Nathan. Get the charger off Nathan. Charger. 
Sorry about my niece, man. No worries, man. No worries. No worries. She could join in if she wants. But yeah, just talking about Mark Heffron, uh, Mark Heffron and the uh, and the kind of contradiction of what Matthew Macklin tweeted. Uh, do you want to just talk about that? Yeah, no, I just felt like, you know, everyone's quick to just start calling out names and calling people quitters because it just seems like what everyone's doing. Of course, it was a big fight and, you know, no one wanted to see it end like that. We all wanted to see someone go out on their back or someone go out on their shoulders, stuff like that, all that, all that lovely warrior stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, Daniel's a young man. His eye, he didn't feel like it was, you know, the best decision to do to, to, to carry on with his eye like that. Which, 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 which I, I can totally respect. You know, he doesn't want to lose his eye. 23 years old. Forget boxing, your whole life is on the line. Your whole life is out there. Like, you don't just want to lose your eye. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. It ended up, it ended. And I just felt like he's being a bit harsh because, um, like you said, with Mark, his eye went, okay, some amount of, no one can hear what's going on in the corner. But he used to say he didn't say, ah, oh, I, I, I don't want to continue. I mean, mm. and then, you know, back in the day with the Kell Brook fight, someone brought up an old tweet of him saying, Oh, uh, um, yeah, Kelbrook went out like a warrior, blah, blah, blah. Like, against Spence when his eye went. And it's like, come on, bro. It's, why is it different shots for different folks? Like, if someone's, if it's, you know, if it's one thing for one person, it should be the same for another. But, you know, it was a big fight. Everyone wanted to see someone go out on their back or someone finish the fight strong. But that could have been damaging to Daniel's career. Maybe he couldn't have come back. But now he's in a position where he can come back. So, you know, you've got to be grateful for the, for the decisions he, make, he made. Um, he, he can always come back, you know, we can want to be a world champion. It just is what it is. But like, listen, people's favorite fighters have quit. Uh, Roberto, um, Roberto Duran. There were no injury. He just said, nah, I'm cool. Mm. And look, he's, he's a legend in his game. So people are just mm. quick to just call out things and just say silly things, which was a bit, a bit annoying at the time because everyone that's like, if it was them, they would go out on their shoulder. Like, I don't mean no disrespect by saying this, but when Matthew Mack can hold a body shot by Golovkin, he, he wasn't out cold, unconscious. He could, he, if he wanted to, he could have got up, but he felt like the pain was too much and he, and he couldn't, and it was unbearable. Same mm. with Daniel. So it's what it is, isn't it? Like, yeah, no, 100%, bro, 100%. I mean, yeah, bro, it's, it's crazy, but look, we've got a lot going on this year, but a lot of things to look forward to, a number of comebacks, especially your kind of fight once the purse bits are being made. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that fight, bro. But any any final words? Because we appreciate you coming on the show, bro. Any final words before we sign out? Yeah, no, man. Thanks for having me, man. So it's been it took so long, but we're here now. Oh, and, no know, worries, bro. We, 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 we'll get more in, but you know, hopefully the purpose go through. Every, everyone gets the fight that they want to see. Everyone gets the facts that they want, and keep progressing this year, man. Yeah, bro. I hear that. Nothing but respect, bro. Could you want to shout out your handles? Yeah, uh, at two sharp d underscore um, two sharp underscore D on both Twitter and Instagram. So yeah, that's me, man. Perfect. Sick, bro. Um, well, Sam, logging out. You heard it here, but Denzel Bentley on the show. Watch out. Purse Biz tomorrow. He's coming for Felix Cash. That's <laughs> bro. Peace. Alright, nice one.